Hey guys, Alex Messel here and in this video I'm gonna show you 5 secret tricks in Premiere Pro that will help you create better videos in no time. Let's go! So, trick number one is using the transform effect to create epic zoom in and out animations. And yes, specifically the transform effect and not the motion effect that sits in your effects control panel by default. Because the transform effect specifically has a nice hidden feature inside. Let me show you what it is. Let's say we have this talking head video and I want to add a zoom in here to amplify the things that I'm saying. For that, I'm gonna go to the effects panel, look for the transform effect and apply it to my clip. Now, let's come back here and start tweaking the settings. To create a nice zoom in, we first need to position our playhead on the frame at which we want the effect to start. Here, we hit the stopwatch for position and scale and then come a few frames later where we want the effect to end and actually zoom in and adjust the position. Let's make sure to ease out the first two keyframes and ease in the last two keyframes for a smoother zooming. Let's play the video and see the result. Very few video editors know, but Premiere Pro actually has a built-in motion tracking function. Now at this point you might be thinking, Alex, I can do all those things with the default motion effect, why do I need to complicate my life and use the transform effect? You see, the result we have so far doesn't really look natural. If I go frame by frame, you'll see that during our zoom in effect, every frame stays perfectly sharp. And so what's missing here is the motion blur. And here's where the secret sauce is. Come here and make sure to uncheck use composition's shutter angle. And then come here and set the shutter angle to 180. Okay, let's play the video now. Very few video editors know, but Premiere Pro actually has a built-in motion tracking function. Looks much more natural, right? If we now browse this section frame by frame, we will see that we added a motion blur there. And the faster the motion is, the stronger is the blur. If you want to increase or decrease the blurriness, you can raise or lower the number right here. Unfortunately, sometimes Premiere glitches and gives you some kind of weird shift perspective once you add the motion blur. So if you're experiencing this glitch, here's a workaround. Simply create an adjustment layer, put it on top of your video and follow the same steps I mentioned before. Or you can just copy and paste the already created transform effect from the clip to the adjustment layer. And after copying the transform effect to the adjustment layer, don't forget to delete it from your original clip. So apart from this small but kind of annoying glitch, this is a very useful trick. Make sure you take advantage of it in your next project. Moving on to the trick number two. This one is actually one of the most useful things when it comes to audio editing. Everyone knows that if you want to apply effects to your audio clips, you simply need to go to the effects panel, choose an effect and drag and drop it on your clip. But what if you want to apply the same effect to all audio clips on the same track? You can of course select all those clips and apply an effect to them at the same time, but is it really practical? And what if you decide to tweak the settings later on? The problem is you won't be able to do it for all the clips at once, but there is a much better way to do it. Let me show you a killer solution here. So if you want to apply the same effect to all of the clips on track one, for example, you need to go to your audio workspace and find the audio track mixer there. If you don't see it, then simply go to window and click on audio track mixer. Now you need to come here and click on this tiny arrow, which will open up these white columns. And guys, honestly, this is the most hidden menu in Premiere Pro ever. But what you can do here is very powerful. Each of these columns represents one of the audio tracks in your sequence. So this one is audio track one, this one is audio track two, etc. And here we have these so-called slots where we can add our effects. And all the effects we add here will have impact on all audio clips located inside a specific track. So if I, for example, add a denoise and a dynamics effect here, they will apply to all clips on the respective audio track. To tweak the settings of the audio effect, Simply double tap it and do the needed adjustments. You can also arrange the order in which the effects are applied. For that, you can simply drag and drop them inside the column or drag and drop them in between the columns to copy the effect to another audio track. You see how powerful it is? I personally use it on almost every single project to slightly denoise my audio and to also make sure it doesn't clip by adding a limiter inside of the dynamics effect. So if you need to add effects to a whole bunch of audio clips, 
this is definitely the way to go. Trick number three is called the pancake timeline. And this is something which saves me a lot of time and actually makes the editing process much more fun. When I'm editing a travel video, for example, I make sure to put all my recordings in one sequence and do the final edit in another. I do this so that I can browse all my shots in one sequence and then actually take the ones I like and bring them to my final sequence. This way I can keep my final edit clean and also have a better overview of all the recordings that I have. One thing which is really annoying though is having to go back and forth between those two sequences. And here's where this nice little trick comes in handy. Not many editors know, but you can actually stack two timelines on top of each other. For that, you have to have them both open, click and hold on one of them right here and drag it down slightly. The area beneath it will get highlighted and you can let go and drop it there. You see, we now have two timelines on top of each other and whatever I put my playhead on is being displayed in my program panel so that I can preview it right away. Now what actually speeds up my editing process is that I can browse through all my recordings and drag and drop the selects directly into my main edit sequence. And guys, this speeds up my editing process so much that I even dare to say that it improves the quality of my videos. Because now that I'm that fast and efficient, I can spend more time fine-tuning some other things in my edit and create better videos for myself and my clients. Next up is the trick number four. When video editors think about animating in 3D, Premiere Pro is for sure the last thing that comes to their mind. But there are actually a few instances in which you can avoid using a dedicated 3D software and do a pretty good job directly in Premiere Pro. For example, let's imagine we're editing a video to promote Pexels.com. This video is not sponsored, I just like their platform very much. And let's say we have a video of their homepage and want to turn this simple screen recording into something much more engaging. You see, I've already done a little preparation and created a white background and added a drop shadow effect to separate the screen recording from it. Now I'm gonna show you how you create a cool animation using the effect called Basic 3D, which you can find in the effects panel. Let's apply it and see what parameters we have inside. So the first two are swivel and tilt, which we can adjust and make our screen recording look like a 3D object. We also have the distance to image, which zooms in or out. I'm gonna start by playing around with the settings and find a nice angle to start my animation. Then I will keyframe all the parameters that I've changed, including the position right up here. And then I will come to the last frame of my screen recording. Here I will once again tweak the parameters and find another cool angle at which I want my animation to end. Something like this will do. Let's now play it and see what we've got. That looks pretty good to me. You can also check show specular highlights here to add a light reflection to your image. But in most cases, I personally prefer not to. For many years, I've been doing such animations only in After Effects, which of course gives you much more control over everything. But for some smaller projects, I definitely think it makes sense to simplify your life and do the job directly in Premiere Pro. So guys, it's time for the last secret trick for today. And for that, we're gonna use the effect called the horizontal flip. While the effect itself is not a big secret, I noticed that not many video editors are actually taking advantage of it. Let's imagine we're editing a video which consists of stock footage with people working on their laptops. Even though there are many such stock videos, I often end up picking those where the laptop is positioned on the same side of the image. And if you want to make a good looking video, we need to make sure we diversify our shots. So for this example, I pick three shots and in each of those shots, we have a person on the left and the laptop on the right. To make it look nicer and less repetitive, I will go ahead and apply the horizontal flip effect to the clip in the middle. Now that we play the video, we have some good composition switches. One thing to keep in mind here is that if we decided to flip the first shot, for example, it might have looked a bit weird because we have a keyboard here which is clearly visible and if we flip the video, the viewer might realize that the keys are not actually in their normal position. So with this effect, you have to be just a bit more careful not to make it too obvious that you flipped the image. But in other cases, it is definitely a very useful trick to know about. And that's it guys, my five favorite secret tricks in Premiere Pro. 
let me know in the comments which one of these you already knew about and which ones you didn't. Thanks a lot for watching this video, like it if it was helpful, subscribe for more and until the next time, have a good one.